Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your Xerox Altalink copier to scan an email using Gmail. Now this video is also going to be very valuable after May 30th for those who already have it set up uh, working fine. And the reason I say that is after May 30th, 2022, Gmail is going to make some changes that it's going to cause chaos throughout probably the, the world I would say there's going to be thousands and thousands of people that are no longer going to be able to scan the email because they have it set up the old-fashioned way and what I mean by that is G, uh, the way you would set up scanning email in the past is you would need to go into your Gmail settings and turn on allow less secure apps option and they're getting rid of that and you're gonna have to use a new protocol and I'm gonna show you how to get through that and the, the workaround on how to have that set properly so that when that time comes you're gonna coast right through you're not gonna see any interruptions and you're gonna be set up properly so um, let's get started first off is we need to get into our Gmail account uh, settings and let me go ahead and open mine up here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my, oops, let me put it right here real quick. Okay, so here's my account here. And we're going to click on securities. Now, the, the way you get to this page is just open up your Gmail. And on the far right, you're going to see a little icon with your initial. Just click on that and then you're going to see manage Google account. Okay, and this is going to open up the screen. So you're going to click on securities. Now, this is what I was talking about, the two-step verification. In order to get uh, email to work in the, uh, Gmail to work in the path, you will need to turn this off. And there will be an option that, uh, that pops up here that says allow less secure apps. Well, that's, that's going away. So you got to make sure that you do have the two-step verification. Now, this is the best part. I'm going to show you how to get past this is once you have this turned on and go through all the verification and so uh, here where it says app password well the app is basically the Xerox we're giving that permission to use our Gmail account so you're going to click here it's going to ask you to log in again to your Gmail account so just being just making sure they're making sure that it's you that's doing this so you're gonna get a message here that says um, you know it says Google wants to make sure it's really you so get your phone and turn it on basically the from the wake up and you're gonna see a message that says uh, trying to change or it's ask you trying to change Google account settings you're gonna hit yes it's me and now you're gonna see this number on your phone make sure you type in on your phone correctly and now this verifies see how it automatically verified you so now it takes you to the next step so now we're going to click on select app and click on other now name it anything you want but I, since it's a xerox copy i'm just going to call it xerox you could call it Xerox copy you could do whatever so now we're going to generate a password for that Xerox copier now even though here it tells you do, you don't have to write this down I recommend you write this down if you ever have to set this again so that you don't have to go through all the step again so right click copy and you can just you know save it somewhere that you want but we're gonna need this so make sure you copy it okay and then you click done and then you can just close out of the screen or just hit back and that's pretty much it and you could just exit let me just go ahead and take the screen out now we get it we need to get into the back end of the copier so assuming that you know the ip address of your copier uh you got to type it in here on the browser address bar this is the ip address of my copier if you don't know the ip address of the copier or you've never signed the ip address of your copier then you need to pause this video and look in the description i have a how to assign an ip address uh, link go ahead and um, click on that watch that and make sure that the copier is on your network in order for you to move forward okay so uh, i'm logged in i'm just going to log off here so what you got to do is you got to log in so the default pass uh, or username or id name is lowercase admin password is 1111 that's the default password 
Now, if this doesn't work for you, I got some bad news. You're going to have to call Xerox, a Xerox authorized dealer to come out and reset that for you. It's not something you could do on your own anymore on the newer equipment. So hopefully you get through. Okay, let's move on. Uh, click on properties. We need to make sure that our DNS servers are set. So here we need to go to IPv4. I have my machine hardwired, I recommend that, but if you're running a wireless adapter, as you can see, I don't have any wireless adapter on my machine, but if you're running it, you'll, you'll collect the edit, you'll click on edit here and just do the same thing that I'm gonna do. So click on edit, make sure that the IP address, uh, you know, all your green check mark mean that it's on your network. So click on the first one, click on DNS, or click here, I should say, show DNS settings. Now, Got to make sure that you have your DNS settings here. I had mine already here. If you don't know how to find the DNS of your network, then I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's going to take too long. So you can use Google's DNS server, which is fine. You can use 8.8.8.8. And their secondary, on the second box, their secondary DNS is 8.8.4.4. Just go ahead and use that. That's fine. It, it works. It works pretty much for everyone and just click apply and it says no changes here because i already had it set up but yours is going to say changes so just make sure you hit okay now scroll back up and we're going to click back here and hit set setup scroll down to where it says smtp and move all the way to the right make sure you have it aligned and you don't click above or below that click on edit and now we're going to set up our outgoing mouse server settings. Okay, so make sure that you have specify SMTP set here. Make sure you have host name here. Type in your Gmail email address here for your account. And under host name, make sure you have smtp.gmail.com. And your port, make sure you have 587 and hit apply. Okay, now make sure you hit apply before we get to the next step. Now we're gonna to get to SMTP authentication. Make sure you put device, you select device here. Now you type in again, your, your email address, your Gmail address, my Gmail address here. Now the password, this is where I had you copy earlier the code we generated. Well, that's the new password to allow the copier to work. So you're not gonna put your Gmail password, you're gonna put that password I had you copy earlier okay so you're gonna paste it here do it again paste it here make sure that's selected automatically put the check bar but just make sure you don't uncheck it accidentally now it's very 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 important that you put system jobs device you click on that and you're gonna see a grayed out background this has to be on or else you're just gonna be scratching your head wondering what you did wrong so hit apply there you go. Go to the next step. Make sure that you have uh, either star TLS or star TLS if available. I always select this. It, it seems to work fine. Uh, you put a check mark here, validate server certificate, and hit apply. Now, we need to test it to make sure we did everything properly. So let's click on test configuration. Type in your email once again of your Gmail account and click send email this is also always the scary part because you don't know if you're doing it right or wrong but hopefully we did it right and there you go this is the message you need test email was successfully sent and you're also going to get a email um, notification saying that it went through it's going to come to your email and that's that's a good sign so once you have this guess what guys you are at 90% done. Now we're going to create our address book. So let's click close and let's go to address book here and we're going to create our first address uh, contact. Okay, so click on manual add a contact. <clears throat> now let's, uh, you can use your e email uh, for test or even if you want to keep it there. So type in your name. I'm just gonna put my initials, it's no big deal. Company name, you can do that if you want, that's no big deal. If you're running many different companies, it's probably good for you to know which company it is. And display name, this is a name that's gonna show up on the copier when you walk up to 
select the address book, you want to know who you're emailing the document to. So put whatever name, whether it's front office, reception, or even the person's name. I'm going to just call it my scans. Okay, now I'm going to type in the email address I want associated with this my scans name. And make sure you put at the global favorites. Make sure both of these are on and you click saved. So guess what guys, you are done. Now let's walk up to the copier and let's do our first scan of email. Okay, so I'm walking up to my machine now. And we need to get to the home screen. If you're not there, you just select the home button there. And now you're gonna look for the yellow envelope that says email on it, select that. Touch where it says add recipient, click on favorites. And there you'll see the contact you created. Uh, we created a MyScan, you'll see there. I have a little paper there blocking my email. I don't wanna receive a million emails from everybody around the world. Uh, so once you select that, hit okay, and then click send. I have a, you can put your document on top of your document feeder face up, but I'm doing it on the glass, okay? Either way, it works fine. So you click send. And now, this is the message you're looking for. Wait for it, wait for it, wait, there you go. Complete, that's what you want. So when you get back to your computer and you open up your email or on your phone, you're gonna receive the email you just scanned. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck, guys.